Hello everyone and welcome to Wolford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast, where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on the BBC in the UK from Monday the 5th to Thursday the 8th of December 2022. I hope you're all well. I trust that you all are. Um, we're all good in the hood. Uh, and look who's back, feeling much better. Hit Rob, everyone. How are you, Rob? How are you? How are you? Hello, 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 everybody. Yes, I'm all right. Much better than I was last week, turns out. So I literally signed off last week. Just a bit of behind the scenes knowledge here. Alex, we, we sometimes have little breaks during recording. And Alex was saying to me, look, you look like death. You sound like death. And I was like, well, cheers, Alex. You you look great as well. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, like, I sort of was feeling a bit like, you know, rubbish and ropey and like I was getting a really bad cold coming on. And then I was, and then as soon as we stopped recording and closed the laptop down and everything, I went downstairs and immediately was kind of like, I feel like death. So I took a test. And I don't know if you've taken a COVID test and had it positive. What tends to happen is that you get two little lines on, and it's like pregnancy test, effectively, I assume. Uh, and the, <laughs> the two lines come through. Uh, like Apparently there's different levels of thickness compared to like how covid you are. Mine looked like two pieces of railway line in the snow it was two thick black like two mono brows sticking out of me at the test so I was like, <laughs> oh right okay great i've got that then so uh yeah i felt like death for a few days much worse than the first time i had it much worse but i'm all right now i've recovered and i'm back to my normal negative self so all, all is marvelous <laughs> yes. all is well <clears throat> i mean yes you're you're, you're back and he's, he's he's got a lot to talk about yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah I mean, i've avoided all because there's been a lot of bugs going around like a lot of people mm. i know who have it's been that time caught, of year, caught, isn't it? yeah but more so than normal um a, a friend of a, a friend of mine says it, it could be linked to everyone being inside for the last couple of years or something the other i don't know inside. But inside yeah. but it's like it's it's it, Someone I know has basically had a cold, then the flu, then COVID, and they've just caught another cold. And that's in the matter of about two months. So it's either been, it's been not been a fun time for a lot of people. I've not would. I'm just mm. knocking the head there for um, anyone who's listening which to the is, podcast. Which is have, good. Yeah, you're quite right. Which con yes, it is. Yeah. Um, Hollow. Haven't caught. Easter haven't egg. caught. <laughs> haven't caught. You no. Know, if I was an Easter egg, you crack me open, I'd be full of delicious chocolate, little Smarties just spilling out all over the table. But yes, I've been very lucky. I don't know. Very, I don't know about lucky. Smarties, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the E numbers <laughs> that are inside Smarties, possibly. Smarties don't have E yeah. numbers anymore. They don't have the they're colours. Not. That's what. No, they're really yeah. dull colours now. What's the point and, of them then? I thought that was the whole point of Smarties. They were like well, the little chocolatey eight-year-olds. <laughs> no, no. If you want Rock that, around. Skittles. Get the Skittles out. They, do you remember they actually banned blue Smarties at one point? At one point during our during our childhood. Yeah, I thought that was an blue urban Smarties. myth. No, no, no. They was... banned oh. blue. No, I remember it. I remember it at school. Like we weren't allowed to bring Smarties in because of the blue Smarties in it. Apparently, they sent kids like as if, <laughs> as if they'd just been given. Chris... Apparently, they turned. They made, made kids like they had been on crystal meth and just ran <laughs> around the classroom like crazy. You know how you get when you've had one caffeine drink. Mm. Like that, but for an eight-year-old. Well, I used to be bad at school. I wasn't allowed to take any sugary drinks to school because it used to make me hyperactive in the class. So the school, Imagine. not anyone, any other student, just me, I was not allowed any sugary mm. drinks for, throughout my time at school. So I wasn't allowed like to take any Coca-Cola or lemonade or anything like that. I'd always have to Nothing's have just changed. water. No, nothing has. I, my tolerance of sugar has gotten better, but I, I do mm. tend to react quite badly if I've had a little bit too much sugar. So, yeah, yeah. no. Nothing ever changes. But um, uh, yeah, no, that's strange about the Blue Smarties. I remember they did a big publicity stunt where they said they were bringing the Blue Smarties back. But no, they're all mm. pale. Not, they're not even pale. They're kind of just like brown Rubbish colours now. now. They're just off colours of brown. Brown red, brown purple, we, brown blue, always, brown green. Always woke snowflake Smarties <laughs> these days. <laughs> I mean, we should say, actually, this reminds me, Smarties is a UK confectionery in America. It's a completely different suite. It's like these, they're like little hard candies in America, Smarties. Yeah. So anyone listening from over the over the pond, we're talking That's about nice. a chocolate treat. They're like M&Ms in the UK. Um, just not as... Not as... That's the anyway. Different thing altogether. Bien, the biscuits, <clears throat> Bien, with a biscuit yeah. face on them. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's another treat that I'll never have again. Um, so anyone who's listening Gelatin. to us, <laughs> probably, anyone who's listening, or milk, normally milk, uh, anyone who's oh, listening yeah. to us on Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, or any of your favourite podcast buddy. apps, don't forget that you can also watch us on YouTube. All you have to do is search us for Wolford Weekly Podcast. Um, and you're always welcome. You're always and nice. don't forget that you can... Uh, to, to rate us, to let us know what you think of us, give us five stars, say hello. Rate us. Um, and get oh, we're an Uber. 
Was... Yes, we want people to know we're here, Rob. And the higher the oh, rating, right, the more people who can find us. Yeah, rate rate Rob and uh, me individually, and uh, uh, send us at Wolford Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rob, we're not here to talk about Smarties and rating us no. and other ways of listening or watching us in it. different formats. No, we're here no. to talk about EastEnders. So, shall we jump on board and have a go at uh, rating the show it. this week? We're starting off then this week with Janine's story. Um, not much to really report other than the fact that she's bumped up her wedding by a few months from uh, mm. April, I think was the original date, to December, yes. to Christmas, I'm, I'm, funnily I'm enough. Uh, what a I'm surprise. I'm leaving soon. I better get this <laughs> wedding in, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, I better get going. But, but for purposes of plot, the reason she's bumped it up to a bit earlier is because she's she's still feeling the fear. Even though Ricky is reassuring her, Shirley's doing his her best not to reassure her that Linda... No basically Linda and Mick are perfect together and that it's going to be a disaster if she ends up marrying <clears throat> Mick. Um, there's also the by byproduct of this story as well, that Ricky is rekindling his love with Sam as well. And there's a few rumors yes. coming around as well about that, about Ooh. perhaps a, oh, yes. a departure for another character as well, which I hope isn't true, but they are only well, rumors Sam. right now. Well, Sam. Yep, Sam. I've not heard Sam, this. Yeah. I'm like, no, no. Oh, have you not? You've not been in the. You've no. not been in the right places. <laughs> I no, go to the dark no. corridors oh, of the internet. I can, assure, I can assure you, I never go to the right places. <laughs> <laughs> but starting off then with Janine, do you feel a bit sorry for Janine in a weird yeah. way? Because like, she, weirdly, she, I do. Oh no, I totally do. Is this I totally relationship? Do. I can mm. completely relate to kind of sitting there and sort of like trying to be like the one person who's kind of just like, oh, yeah, get married, and it's exciting, and then just watching. I can, I can fully imagine how she's feeling. Still Standing there behind the bar, watching Mick and Linda sort of just uh, flirting. Let's be fair here; they are prop just proper flirting and giggling together and being all mm. kind of. So I, I, I am so. I'm uh, as far as that is concerned. I have to say, I'm totally Team Janine. I get completely where where she's coming from and how she's feeling, which is nice because it means that she's not coming across as just a total one dimensional sort of super bitch. <laughs> she just doesn't like anyone else to be happy. Like I get, when I get went, where what? she's coming. I from. I thought you were going to say a completely different word. Went wow yeah. and then keep, dimensional. Keep you on your, <laughs> keep, keep you on your toes. Uh, so, but um, yeah, no, I, I I get it completely. Bless her, and I've I, and the fact that you know she's also got Shirley sat there, kind of just draining know. any happiness out, Magibate, trying to drain know. any happiness Poking out of her, like a like a chain smoking blonde haired dementor, like <laughs> just like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do I do feel sorry for her. So she has basically behind Mick's back sort of hurried the wedding up so now they're getting married in two weeks as though that's mm. going to solve everything, which in Janine's brain it probably would. But um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's not looking good. It's really not looking good. I mean, do you think they're even going to make it up the aisle? Do you reckon? Is, <laughs> hey. are, we, are we ever going to see Janine Carter on the credits? I'm going to pass that one right by, Alexander. Um, <laughs> do you think we're going to see Janine Carter on the credits at any point before she leaves? What do you reckon? I don't know because we don't know when this whole horrific uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Yes. Yes. You know, what the photos that have been out for a while now on the cliff, we don't know when that's happening, mm. whether before or after. she's not wearing a wedding dress in those pictures. If my memory serves me correct. So no. I don't, so whether it, it happens around about the time, I'm not sure. It's the acid uh, rain they have in London it rips it off her and just reveals the normal outfit underneath. Well, like Mel um, when she had that fight in the forest, <laughs> <laughs> rolling around in the mud. Well, one thing that I've, I do want to mention: play the Ashdown Claxon because Simon Ashdown is back for Christmas and Boxing Day, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So we have the big guns coming out for Christmas. So all <laughs> the ingredients are there, frankly, for this to be a bloody good. A bloody good Christmas. <laughs> mm. Can't wait. Um, which is very exciting because a double ash down over Christmas. What more could you possibly want from it from East End? Yeah, and Ashdown... away. Not to take away from any of the other writers, but I get more excited when I see Simon Ashdown's name on the credits than I do anybody else. It has to be said. I love him. I love his writing. Well, he's a classic writing, and right? he's he's he he's, he's proven he's a proven worth. So, you know, well, as you say, nothing yeah. to detract any other writers. But, no, you know, no, he, but you know, the thing is, they tend to bring him out for the really big episodes, don't they? Mm. Like the grave the climax, you know, the the, the Mitchell. The, you know that if Simon Ashdown is He fixed is the, the grey story by yeah. one one episode. Just, didn't he just, just about, yeah. Um, it's just so the see, the man's a genius, could do anything. Um, <laughs> he took two years solved. worth of absolute garbage and turned it into yeah. some gold for the very he last could solve. He could solve Russia versus Ukraine. No problem. In one oh, episode, he'd be like, right, yeah, I'll just sort that out. Down. Yeah, just sort, uh, just sort that out. Not a problem. So, yeah. But, but you know that a big episode is coming if you see his mm. name in the credits. So it's naturally exciting. So it's good. Mm. Yes, can't wait. I think they will get married now, to come to, come to think of it, because they Reckon. revealed, all because, all because of reveals I've seen on the internet this week. Because on the what's see, on TV. Don't spill the reveals everywhere. Don't spoil it, because I don't look I'm at the reveals spoil- and everything. 
Well, no, 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 no. It's only that they showed the cover of what's on TV, and it's the week before Christmas, oh, and they okay. had a picture of Mick uh, and Janine looking all loved so up before. with like a. It's before. So that. I think they're going to get married before, and then mm. I think something will happen that will really then give break Janine. So I think I think you may see Janine uh, Carter on the credits. Carter. Goodness me, Janine Carter, got a ring JC, to it. got a ring to it. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, that's why they've done it. <laughs> Jesus' birthday. <laughs> Conspiracy oh, yeah. theorists, nothing, come jump out nothing, on me. <laughs> nothing says the Archangel Gabriel than Janine, does it? Yeah, she's just the epiphany <laughs> of Christmas. <laughs> oh, she's just she's just misunderstood old Janine. I she do is. sometimes think that. Completely. To be fair, Barry, in my mind. Barry slipped. And I will. Like, Barry did slip. That. Barry did well, slip. Well, Barry made the ultimate mistake by thinking what Janine was doing was the right thing to do, you know, yeah. was, was believable, you know? His own fault. So, ultimately, his Barry's own fault. A bit, his gullibility. Never anything wrong. She's yeah, misunderstood. Misunderstood. She is misunderstood. And, uh, innocent person, and everyone else is horrible to her. <laughs> that's the, that's the thing. That's all it is. I mean, I get why Linda's rubbing it in. Uh, rubbing it in. Um, I get why she she's just, rubbing it in. I know. It's just, she just, I just, no, Linda I just, doesn't give a toss. Linda does not give a well, toss. She sees she would a get, fight, doesn't she? She does, and she's loving the she's loving the drama. Like last week was great. That little scene between that between them, which made Janine kind of go psycho and trash the kitchen. It's great. Loved all that. Uh, and mm-hmm. Linda is basically like throwing no qualms at it whatsoever. Like she's basically she, like she's literally just sat on the sat at the table like looking at Mick kind of just basically massaging her breast like yeah oh I know Mick so funny just in front of Janine she doesn't care well um, talking about Shirley's their times at school well. let's let's just think it's G-rated exactly. here <laughs> like, <laughs> is it <laughs> she's, she's, not, she's not doing anything sexual it's, but she's she's but, kind of reminding Mick that they've got this big history and even Mick this week said like you'll never forget your first love when she talked about Ricky and I know oh Sam. that didn't that he just put his foot in it, it? Mm. Yeah, I thought I I bit my knuckle when you said that. I was like, oh, because um, that again, <laughs> just sort of I did because look again, just sort of like that's how uh, that's how little Janine I think is on his mind in general. Like he's just thinking of Linda all the, all the time now. Hmm. So yeah, I just see nothing but pain and devastation for Janine in the next couple of weeks. Which yes, I know some of it she brings on herself. I know she does that, but it's a reactionary thing with Janine nine nine times out of ten. She doesn't tend to go into stuff like like deliberately as an antagonist. It takes, it takes very little for her to turn into the antagonist role. I think that's Janine's sort of mm. thing. Like it doesn't take much, but I, she doesn't often go into a situation where she's like, right, I am deliberately going to start something here. It's more like, right. Oh, well, this is happening. Well, this is my reaction to it. And then it all goes crazy. So, and, and then we, yeah. that's what we're in at the moment. So if things doesn't go Janine's weeks, way, she will then manipulate yes. it. But the problem with Janine is that she manipulates it to such a degree that th- like she tangles herself in her own lies. Yeah. And then she gets herself caught up, and then it all goes to pot. Okay. And she's kind of thrown, okay. she's thrown Mitt Ricky under the uh, under the bus a little bit now because she, he's kind of he's kind of like involved too, and he's in he's like the man in the middle. He's trying to he's trying to appease Mick. He's trying to appease uh, Janine, but Mick found a way of getting rid of Ricky because he kind of felt like Ricky was kind of attaching himself a little bit too much to him, like constantly obsessed with what he was doing, where he was going. (laughs) I know, I've got enough friends, thanks. I've got enough friends at the brewery I'm going out with tonight. Um, His mates at the brewery. Oh, great. So he he, he has a chat with Sam at the uh, laundrette. Um, yeah, can you, get rid of, can you do Sam. something with him tonight? Yeah. I really don't want to go out Take with him. Out. Can, you, can you have a go, go, cheers? <laughs> He's a third string. We're not enjoying his company. So he convinces no. Sam to, to take Ricky out. I suppose Ricky kind of took her out to Wolf and yeah. East and they had a date and they, they started reminiscing about, you know, their past and, you know, Sam when she was a completely different youth, different face. Well, human being. Um, different human model, being, Alex. Let's be, let's be fair being. here. <laughs> did those two, I can't remember, did, was Kim Metcalf Sam at any point during Ricky? I can't, I can't remember. I I he don't remember them point. meeting one another, but I, I i mean, we posted as a joke saying, oh, not surprised Ricky didn't recognise her. Ha, ha, ha. They must have and had We some... had a few people say, yes, they had met before. So, yeah, they you must know, have I'm, done. They must, they must have, done. have, perhaps in passing, they did, maybe. Because yeah. the, the only other time, the only time I remember Ricky was the, the original Sam was there um, mm. when Rick, when Sam came back for two episodes and then, um, yeah. then left again to dropped off yeah. Ricky Jr. No, Peggy's funeral. T- was but Ricky wasn't around then, was, was he? Pick, Ricky wasn't around. No, Picky, Picky, Picky. <laughs> Ricky <laughs> was around. Was Ricky I wasn't, can't remember. Ricky was around for the funeral. I'm I sure of it. I'm, I no, I'm sure. It, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't think he was. I can't remember when Ricky left last time. I can't he seems to dive in think... and out now. To be fair, yeah. He's, oh, you know, he's in, oh, he's in and out more. Sid. He's, he's in and out, in and out, in and he's out. Like, make your mind up. Close the door behind you, for Christ's sake. Either way, like, <laughs> I love. <laughs> I love my, that Ricky. As my, as my mum would say, "Are you in or out?" Go on, it's cold. <laughs> it's draft coming in. <laughs> You're letting the heat out. Keep. <laughs> 
Bless your mum. She's right. As always, your mum is completely As right. Always. Ricky and Sam, mm. is that a relationship you can see blossoming? And do you think the rumours are true that Ricky could go off to Germany with Sam in tow? I don't think Sam's going anywhere because I think there's too much kind of with Sam. There's too much kind of going on with Sam at the moment. There's no need for Sam to go anywhere at this point. Um, Ricky, I mean, yeah, something will happen. I think the thing is, Ricky's role, I think, is to sort of take Scarlet away at the end of all this. So I don't think whatever is going on with her. With Sam, I like that they've kind of. I like that they're revisiting Sam and Ricky. That's great mm. because obviously that was a re- that was a relationship that went on right at the start of Sam's time on the like Sam's ever first ever appearance was the, yeah the right. the late eighties late eighties yeah. when the butchers were first introduced love at first yeah, sight. 19- 1990 she came in just after the um she came in just and uh, a few months after the mitchell boys did so oh right um, okay that's when, that's, when, that's when sid darwin had like long hair you know in a ponytail yeah his ponytail those yeah days. and they drove off to gretna and got themselves called married. It, um, 20 20 years later we called it a man bun but it, it was no just a ponytail that put in those days <laughs> uh, and um so they have so much history together which is great you know so i like that they're revisiting this but i in the long term obviously i don't think sid owen's around for a huge amount much longer so I think I, I literally think his role is to kind of just take Scarlet, go right, you come with me, off to Germany we go. And then, wow, and then I didn't know he was Scarlet. taking Scarlet away with him. No, what, I don't, do you think Janine's going to be I'm unhinged? Assuming, I'm, like she's going to be I'm, taken she, to an asylum of some sort. Well, facility. I don't think that she. I don't. Well, no, I don't think. Oh no, but I just don't think that she that it's going to be suitable for Janine to have Scarlet when when she leaves. I don't think Scarlet is going to be with Janine for much longer. You would be right to care for Scarlet, no, and no. I don't think Scarlet's going to stay around after after this is done. So it makes perfect sense for Ricky to kind of take her and then take about to germany or whatever so i didn't think scarlet was going to end up going with ricky or janine i thought she was going to stay on the square with cat because i like the character I, uh, scarlet but i like scarlet but i don't think that there's going to be any once if janine's gone mick's gone and ricky's gone there's mm. nothing for her there like there's no point in her going to live with the cat because the cat and the mitchells and the, the mitchell kids have already got enough stuff going on so i don't think i <laughs> no, I, I, just... I, I don't I, I don't want her to go but i think i don't think there's a place for her once janine and everyone that she's associated with has disappeared so i, I fully believe that that's why ricky is back not just for rick not just for scarlet but he's a very useful thing to sort of just take scarlet away and tie everything up in a ribbon i think but but we'll see a neat little bow okay well yes. yeah, yeah we've, we've got a big we've got the Back big wedding coming <laughs> <laughs> exactly um um, yeah. So uh, we'll move on then to the next story. So we're now talking about Amy's story um, and Jack and Denise. Just to let you know, there may be themes and conversations where we'll be talking about self-harm. If this is something you don't want to listen to, um, then please feel free to skip to the next story. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, another horrific week for poor uh, yes. Amy this week. She uh, got herself uh, into some trouble um, and only Ricky, poor little Ricky Jr. could save her. Um, yeah. And it's caused a lot of a lot of panic within the family, so much so that Denise is quite concerned that Jack seems to be coming, leaning too much now on looking after Amy and forgetting about other responsibilities that he has. Rightly or wrongly, uh, Denise feels I... like he's kind of narrowing his uh, direction on only Amy right now. I th- I don't think that's unreasonable, you know. I I don't think that you know. Yes, she had a bit of a snap at him because she because uh, he forgot to pick up uh, Raymond from school. But um, I honestly I thought that I, I I don't think Denise has much of a as as much of a leg to stand on if she's going to start having to go at him about this. You know, when she went out and was sort of like, right, I've got to die. I need to forget. It's kind of like, come on, triple vodka. Keep a adding it. Re- a tad unreasonable, <laughs> I think. Um, yes, Amy uh, basically went too far this week uh, with uh, with her self harming, and um, yeah, did it, it all went a bit far, and she basically couldn't stop bleeding, so she had to run downstairs. Ricky had to call an ambulance, which all would have been quite traumatic for Ricky. Bless him. Um, <clears throat> He's only twelve. I know. Imagine all this. All this at well, 12. Jesus Christ. I, I mean, oh, he's a lot of responsibility on his little shoulders, eh? Um, and yeah, she, he had to call an ambulance. Um, yeah. he, he didn't, you know, he, Jack and Denise found out that she was going into the ambulance um, as they were leaving the pub. Yeah. This was after they had the conversation that they were trying to get Howie to convince Denzel to um, kind of because Amy only listens to Denzel and Denzel uh, kind of had the conversation with her, but then got upset when Denzel said, you know, I kind of just want to be friends rather than just have a relationship. And Amy took that the yeah. wrong way. And so I mean, it kind of spiraled to that, that situation. Uh, yeah. I mean, the whole thing with Denzel was, was I, I thought went very well handled because I kind of looked at Denzel and thought there was absolutely no way this kid 
is going to be able to he's going to want to put himself in this situation and because he would he wouldn't have a clue what to do really would he he's, mm. doing, he's doing i think he's doing his best with what he the thing is i don't i didn't realize that it was like the kids knew about what was going on i thought it was like a secret that had only just been kept within the branding family and yet kind of denzel sort of knew it seemed to know what was going on which i was surprised i don't by. think I denzel think that... knew what she was doing i think that, that, that denzel was aware that amy was upset by stuff that was being said on the internet about her but i don't think yeah. he knew what she was doing to kind of rele relieve herself from release, the pain, releases. release the yeah, pain. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Sorry. The release the pain because um, Nugget also made the mistake of in front of Amy saying, Oh, I hear that your dad's going to lose his job as well. And it's like, nice one, Nugget, you know, um, Nugget. Um, <laughs> oh, Nug Nugs. Um, no, Nug Nugs. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I have to say this storyline is great. I, for, you know, I use the, I use the term as, as carefully as I can, but in terms of how they're handling it and everything, I think, I think it's, I think it's great. I think everyone's playing an absolute blinder. Um, where it goes from here, Amy is kind of, they've been to the hospital. Jack has kind of been beating himself up about how we, how we uh, acted in that first therapy session, which I'm pleased that they referred back to because yes, Jack, you did not handle that well. <laughs> uh, and, um, and he's sort of, you know, trying to beat himself up. But am I doing enough? Am I, am I, am I handling this right? You know, which you know you can understand from Jack's perspective because it's like if you've got no experience on how to handle this, then what the hell do you do? Because you want mm. to sort of shout and shake her and be like, "Why are you doing this to yourself? Stop it! Like, stop it! This is silly! Stop it!" Whereas, you know, obviously you need to sort of understand that there's much, there's, there's so much more psychological stuff going on that it makes it like not such a. It's not just. It's you can't take these things at face value, which I think he's now learning. Yeah, so, see, Jack Jackson solved problems with his fists or through gift buying, but he can't solve problems through exactly yeah. through psycholo psychological therapy or kind of conversation. And this is a whole yeah. new thing for him to learn. And I think that's why he's kind of attached himself to Amy because he's now he's now he he's all, he can only do one thing at a time. It's almost like OCD, isn't it? Maybe Jack's mm. been un un undiagnosed for ADHD or something because he can only focus on one thing at a time now. Um, and I mean, that's think... what's distressing Denise because she feels like that he's losing all other responsibility. Yeah, I mean, I think the Branning men, really. I think out of all three of the main Branning men that we've ever met, like Jim, Max and Jack, I think Jack is probably the best hand to probably deal with something like this but he's still not ideal you know mm. it's not it's not something that the branding men are really kind of equipped to deal with uh <laughs> so it's kind of i think it's interesting to sort of give jack this sort of story just to see how that react and how much of his dad is on and how much of his brother is really is sort of really in him in terms of how emotive and emotionally mature he can be about this um but you know they get back from the hospital amy's okay now you know she it, luckily everything everything's all right you know she's talking to therapists she's being honest with the therapists uh you know denzel's now kind of stepping up and being there for her he's made it clear that uh, maybe not yet for a relationship amy let's wait till you get yourself sorted first and then let's talk about it later it's not a no it's just a not yes i think was really basically what but he's being he's been a crutch for her so he's gonna look yeah. after her hi which again, this is why I love these these kids so much. Like I, I think that's I just think they're such a great set of kids, mm. you know. And I know Nugget's a pain in the ass, but you know his role in it as well. I don't mind Nugget. Real, I, I feel a bit sorry for him to be fair because he's he's, know, like, he's he's had such he's so, a he's so bad mature, upbringing. Yeah, because this this week, you know, even you know his 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 dad was talking to Zach on a story we'll talk about a bit later on. But he said, you know, well, when you have a child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's it. He kind of said, yeah. like, you know, it, 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 I, now I love him. It's changed my life. But, you know, when he first yeah. came around, I was like, who? Oh. Nugget who? Oh. And then went to jail to avoid him, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, I, I get it completely. And I can't mm. wait for the for the kids. I really can't wait for the kids to continue growing up and really get to know these mm. kids. and Because they've all individually, apart from Denzel, who's just a bit of a, a bit of a silly boy in, in himself he's a boy at the end of the day like and he just hasn't matured yet yeah. so he's denzel's kind of got an all right life but then even then you know you've got the whole thing that kind of went on with his mother who seems a delilah i think her name is was, wasn't it who uh seems to just be well wanted to palm them off she didn't care, want him did she care. so yeah. yeah so they've all kind of got those sort of parental issues there you know mm. amy's lost her mum denzel's lost his mum i think like i'm not sure what happened with denzel's mum and he's got ravi for a father so all in all his, nugget, his nugget. Not, yeah yeah sorry yeah so denzel's not gonna not nugget there nugget's not gonna be great nug, nug. um nug. and then you know denzel's kind of got that going on so all in all all the kids have kind of got this in common so i'm really looking forward to it as they get older and more emotive issues can start being thrown at them 
just to see how they like, cope with it all. The next generation mm. of EastEnders characters are looking quite interesting as they're kind of going up. So I'm, re- mm. I'm really, really excited about that. And they grow and it's up. it's achieved in quite a short amount of time as well. You know, or like these kids have been around for like a few months at most, you know, and we've all well, pretty much as like... Chris Clenshaw came in. He's kind of yeah, introduced they're all... the younger cast with Amy yeah. and Lily and, you know, and Will's got perfectly... more of an impact. Br- yeah. And they're all perfectly good characters, all each in their own right. So, yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah. very, very exciting. Um, when, so, yeah, um... Amy's. Go on, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, you're talking about the young characters and how good they're, they're, they've yeah. been. Um, we, you know, a few months ago, we were on this podcast and we were cackling our little faces off this very podcast we were cackling our faces off laughing at the Alyssa scene when she was filming uh people yeah. being filmed dancing to tiktok and just saying this is not how young people react this is no. not how young people talk please stop like doing this lola challenging that in the club later on this week but we'll get to that later <laughs> i must say whitney, whitney and lola for that 30 second silent dancing between them was great fun um but the, the conversations between uh amy and denzel this week i thought were brilliant really well written and yeah. also the ones with nugget and denzel and like just having them talk together. and it felt like this was a conversation they would have you know and it's and so I'm, I'm really pleased you know i credit where credit's due i thought that this week i thought you know what the, the writing for that was really really good so mm, it was a yeah. it's a huge leap from let's say tiktok gate when they were dancing mm. in the garden in the park um that yeah. time and so it was nice no to more. see that so i i really appreciate i really enjoyed yeah. that a lot it's good it's good well done keep this up with the kids uh yeah so amy comes home all all is well uh and she see and it seems that she's and she says that she's thrown all her stuff away as in you know all her kit should we say um so that's she says she's thrown all that away now so now where do we go from here i don't think this is over yet by a long shot i think it might take you know a bit it's going to take a bit longer well, i hope not there's <laughs> well, no, but just I'm, like write no, it off as in well that's that story done <laughs> next no no i don't think they will i think it's going to be like i think you know there's going to be more kind of trauma coming for amy i think just to sort of test mm-hmm. her in a way you know like she's got to kind of she's got to learn how to sort of deal with life with with living in walford without having to without having to turn to that i think so it's i, I think there's a long journey to the left ramey and jack and denise uh and the sort of and and denzel as, as a sort of add-on to it as well so there's a lot more to come for this but i have to say i think they've done it brilliantly i really yeah. do i think they've handled it sensitively and they've done it as, as big and as kind of gritty as they can given the uh the, the time, time slot and the time yeah. of, type of pro- mm. broadcast it is yeah. i mean the story there as well really which is something that the show tends to touch on but never really goes very far with and that's social media again i mean they always we always say oh it's a social media story but then because we've always had the expectations that they're never going to delve too deep into it and i feel like this is an opportunity where they could maybe delve a little bit deeper in it obviously we know yeah. the dangers of social media and normally it's that they someone get post something or something gets posted about them they get upset there's a little bit of aftermath and then that's the end of it i feel like that yeah. we, 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 there's more that can be told about like What's what's a parent's responsibility of their the children's social media? You know, um, Mickey Junior. I'm presuming he's on social media. He's 12. Isn't the year? It, yeah. Well, it, it, isn't he would have seen it? So he's got this view on his sister that he's developing, which could be completely different to like if you just yeah. live with a person. But at the same time, he's 12. Yeah. You know, 13 is meant to be the legal age when you're meant to start social media. So you know what I mean? It's yeah. like there's that conversation to have. You know, is you know Kim uses social media as a positive thing she always brings it up you know i'm a dating extraordinaire and also i'm a social media queen and you know i make my money from doing this and the other so yeah what kim does how how can she kind of like compare it to like you know when maybe she gets negative comments talks to amy you know what i mean it's it's been touched Mm. upon it's always touched upon but never really goes much further is there is there further to go though oh i think so i mean i've i've said before that i thank god social media wasn't a thing when i was at, when i was at school because... i know i'd hate to grow up seeing photos of me like when i was 12 13 just be like well, oh, oh goodness yeah. me. But, but not even that but like how easy it is to bully somebody 24 mm. hours a day mm. you know in any way that you can and there's ways to get around being blocked and all that kind of thing and the kids know what they're doing if you want to bully somebody there's ways of doing it on social mm. media and you can do it facelessly you can do it anonymously and you can do it in whatever way you want and it makes it ten times scarier to be bullied. Uh, so yeah, I think that the the, the, exp- the exploration of that is something that really needs to kind of be looked at. Because I don't think the soaps are really covered. Like, obviously, soaps have done bullying storylines before, but I think the dawn of social media has kind of opened bullies up to a whole new array of possibilities and weapons. So mm-hmm. it's I think, and we kind of got a glimpse of that um, last week when the when the messages were coming through on Amy's phone when she was doing the memorial to Dot. So 
I think it'd be really, really interesting to kind of explore that. I mean, obviously, she, you know, even though she's getting herself help, that doesn't mean the bullying is going away. So we've still got all that to come, I think, and sort of look at how Amy is kind of going to deal with it. And I'd like to see the other kids in the square sort of kind of step forward and be like, right, I'll like, I can imagine Lily kind of stepping forward and go, right, you, I'll, I'll rally around her. Right now. <laughs> yeah, let the Stacey and I come out, you know? So mm, I'd like to mm. see that kind of move on. So, yeah. Um, and I think much more to come for this. It seems like Amy's s- slowly on the path to recovery, but I think there's a long, a long, long road ahead for her. And I'm, I'm mm. looking forward to seeing how they handle it. Definitely. I mean, all the kids are very positive, very kind of good, good characters at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. So I wonder if a character right. could turn. Amy, Amy, not Amy, Lily did almost with, with Amy tried to do it with Lily, didn't she? At one point, she kind of started yeah. doing a bit of bullying toward her and then, the tables turned when Amy took the drugs. So I'll be, I'll be interested to know if they're even introduced, maybe a group of characters like they uh, did in the past. Alexa's anyway. back. <laughs> oh God, please never Who again. Who was Alexa? I can't remember her name. Oh, I forget the other one, but yes, I know that I know exactly the yes. two you're talking about. <laughs> Bex, 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 yeah, chanting Bex's name when she got caught in I, st- I, I, st- I think I stepped out of the show around that time. So Probably uh, for the best, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, it was, it was a troubling time. That. I missed that era. <laughs> Whitney had some news this week um, after taking a test. It's good that they sell uh, pregnancy tests in packs of two, isn't it, Rob? I find they do. it's really helpful when you and a friend need have. to take a test. Well, they no, you can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> about this writing convenience. I'm they always have. It's fun. It's I funny. stock. It laugh. When I'm at work, I when I well when I when I'm at work, I stock sometimes. I put pregnancy tests on the shelf. And it's, do and you? It's, always, do you sometimes think well, to yourself, oh, my buy a box for me and a friend? Yeah, later tonight. I have always wanted. I have. I have <laughs> I've always wanted to do a pregnancy blokes, test. I, blokes, boys, it's come not on. Weird, have you not always wanted to wee on a pregnancy? Have you not always wanted to wee on a pregnancy test? Admit it. Admit it. And then find out you're pregnant and see what's going on. It'll be. <laughs> no, apparently, if, if 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 a bloke comes positive on a pregnancy test, then you need to go to the doctor's like immediately because it means something's actually bad inside you. I can't remember what it is, but it's a like, baby, a baby bad, inside you. Right? <laughs> it's like no, the Arnold Schwarzenegger like, film. Junior. I think, no, I think I think it's like I, I I think it's cancer or something like that. Like somebody can detect oh. something in it. Apparently, wow. that might be an urban legend. I don't know. It might be one of those sort of. I don't know. It might be an urban but legend. I don't is, know. Anyway, this is taking a horrible turn, Rob. A horrible turn. I'm just saying. I'm just occasion. saying. <laughs> Whitney's pregnancy. Whitney's pregnancy. Okay. She's anyway, pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> they thought it was Lily's, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, can I just say? I mean, I, I, I do bemoan making characters pregnant. Bemoan. I think that it's. I so bemoan. I bemoan. I bemoan, uh, I bemoan characters betwixt the uh, the discussions uh, because um, I, 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 I do sometimes think that like oh, making a character pregnant that just sort of just makes them dull now for for ages and ages and ages it's, because it's or, a criticism, or makes, isn't it for a lot make, of people? It say. is. I do. I do think it is for my part because I'm just sort of like oh now we're gonna and then she's gonna give birth and then she's gonna forget about the kid for ages because the writers remembered that she was a great character before she became pregnant. So you know mm. we're like. The, Sharon, we've only seen Albie for the first time this week in months and months and months. Sharon's been yeah, most of really time blonde the hair. Now, wasn't he Did just, you notice yeah. he had his mother's hair? Yeah. Oh, and Janice, Damien, now that kid. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. It was so um, bright yeah, blonde. I know. Honestly, it burnt yeah. my eyes. It burnt my eyes. Glaring oh. studio lights coming off the poor kid, bless him. <laughs> um, beaming. But what I would say about Whitney being pregnant, I am stunned, yes. stunned mm. that they've only they've done this now with Whitney. I mean, I know that she had the storyline with Lee, but that clearly was what it was supposed to be from the very start. But yeah. I I can't believe that Whitney's not, I, that they've waited all this time to give Whitney a kid. I'm assuming she's going to have the kid, but it, I think I she is, isn't she? The, yeah, I think she is. And I can't believe it's taken all this time for Whitney to have a kid. Of everything that's ever happened to Whitney, I can't believe that pregnancy <laughs> really wasn't a massive like contributing factor in her life. You know, it to seems be that... Fair, they did mention that Whitney has been engaged, what, three times? Woody? Yeah. And she's Lee. avoided all this. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow this, this has been out. That is just the report. That's just the basic sum up of how bad Whitney's relationships are. She could be engaged three times and this has barely been a factor in her life, you know, <laughs> bless her. So there you go. Let's but, yeah, she... I mean, Zach. Sorry, go on. I was going to say Zach. Zach, uh, Zach's found out. Zach discovered Zach Fuji. Zach out. He oh, was Zach did this. Oh, concerned. see now, Zach did the thing that winds me up. I'd love, I would love to have a bad day and go. Do you know what? I'm off. 
throw yeah, take a duffel pile, bag with you and off you go pack throw the nearest pile of clothes that i could find into a suitcase <laughs> so it'll be three t-shirts one pair of boxes and, a, and one sock and just then the just throw pair. them all into a, into a suit yeah just, oh, that, yeah and just throw them all that's that's it that's the life see you later and then just stroll <laughs> off into the night never to be seen again and just mm. like where do, i mean where what would you do when a soap character does that where are they going what have they decided that they're going to do are they just going just to walk each other decide where they want to go where are they what what money are they doing they're leaving their job they're leaving their family they're leaving their friends behind because they've had a bad day and then they're just off like, i don't get where these people go well it's Zach only left for truth. 24 hours to be fair and sharon did cover yeah, because he realized well how stupid it was to go oh, well i've got nowhere i've got <laughs> nowhere got... to go i better go back <laughs> he, got <laughs> I mean, like... he got arrested by the police didn't he because he got drunk and disorderly and the police officer yeah, but, like, yeah we're not entirely sure what went on with that like because because oh, a really sassy police officer went around, but you're lucky the shopkeeper is Peter not pressing Bean. charges. Like, what did you do? Like, did you try and hold a shop hostage or something? What were you doing, Zach? I know, but, but in know. a shop as well. So he must have got drunk yeah. somewhere. And, and then, then just went to a shop. Ran did like a, a shop or something. Did a dot cotton and started knocking things down, like in a pharmacy yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, looking for those pregnancy kits, you see? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, right. right. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're out of pregnancy on? kits. <laughs> I mean, one more. And the reason, the reason mm, they sell them in yes, twos, sorry. by the way, which is where, yes. which is how we got onto the mad top. See, this is what we do. Can you? This is how you can tell this podcast <laughs> is not a word of this is written because we just we go no off into random tangents. Mm. Um, yeah, the reason that they sell them in packs of two is because you can't be one hundred percent sure over over one result. Ah. Obviously, soap characters never do that. Soap character, no pregnancy test is one hundred percent positive. Is one hundred percent you know correct? So. You that's why you buy packs of two. You're supposed to do two pregnancy tests at a go, and then you can be sure. Oh, if one's right. positive, one's negative, then you know you're not sure. Then so you're still not it's any wiser. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so you go to the doctor and actually don't do it properly. Um, yeah. Do I, also, Whitney is she, if she's taking the pregnancy test. What is it? Six weeks? Is it when you take a pregnancy test? Just under just though. I'm not sure. I mean, no, you can do you could do you could do a pregnancy test. I'm pretty sure that now you can do pregnancy tests like the day after or something. Oh, really? Something. I, there's some there is some early test. There's no, some the next day. <laughs> But it might, but, but there's early, there's like tests that are specifically made to be early detection. So okay, but so but but, but, but the argument here is is that Whitney's is okay. quite early like, on in the pregnancy. Representative to clear blue. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsorship deals coming. Um, Whitney is quite early on in the pregnancy for Whitney to to know that she's pregnant. So don't you think she's kind of like letting people know a bit early on? Oh, like do, you, do you have suspicions? Have I have suspicions. suspicions. Go well. I have oh, things might go wrong. Dear. But she's like well, telling everyone who listen. Now she's thrilled now, and she, well, she's quite happy now. And like she was initially worried that Zach wasn't the best uh, guy to be bringing up a kid, and she had. A, well, a Zach was worried about that too. Zach was terrified of that, hence why he packed his little duffel bag, went off, and <laughs> ram raided a shop. Presumably, like, I don't know what he did. Uh, <laughs> I don't like nick some chewing gum or something. I don't know what he was up to. Uh, and uh, but they, you know, by the end of the week, they've sort of kind of they're kind of holding hands and going, "Do you know what? Let's just let's do this. I'm sure it'll be fine." Which I thought was quite sweet. I loved that scene of on because Whit. Let's be honest, Whitney ne- tends to not have. Good Good birthdays you know i remember her 16th very well that didn't go well either so uh, it's <laughs> that 30th. grooming doesn't, doesn't end up yeah. well does it grooming <laughs> it's, it's never a good it's never a good thing for a, well. for a birthday <laughs> bless her uh so 30th uh you she know she's, she's pregnant and she's she can't drink bless her she can't drink at all she can't she can't do what she wanted to do oh, yeah. but you know but sucks zach you, turns whitney. up <laughs> it sucks to be whitney i imagine not being able to get drunk on your 30th um, you know, Zach turns up and they all sort of, and, they, and everything's sort of okay. They've sort of, they, they don't look like they're together necessarily. I think Whitney was kind of just like, you know, right, you've got a few months to go out and have some fun. Go on, <laughs> knock yourself out. Yeah, no, I'll, no, I'll be here when when you come back. I'll just get progressively more pregnant. <laughs> Zach, Zach kind of made out to begin with that she he was happy to have the kid, but didn't really want the responsibility of it. And then Whitney quite rightly yeah. said, "Well, I'm not going to be the only one bringing up this child. So if I'm going to have it, then we're going to do it together." And Zach was like, "Oh yeah, yes. okay, fine, but not." We're not going to be in a relationship. So I think you're right. I think they're going to have that kind of yeah. polyamorous relationship. Is that what it's called? When they're kind of like together, but they can see other yeah. people. I, I read dictionaries. <laughs> so you see, like, quite so hollow. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of, yeah. So they're, they're going to they're gonna bring it up together. It's going to be like a my, it's going to be like a three men and a little lady situation, isn't it? It's going to be like, well, like it's going to be Finley, Felix and Zach bringing up this little girl yeah. or boy. And Whitney's yeah, going to I mean, go able to pursue I mean, her singing career. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's always got that if she ever needs a break. Let's be fair. Um, I mean, I always assumed that it was. I, I assume they're going to get. To, they're just going to get together at some point. Like it, it, they did the whole holding the hands and we're kind of looking at each other, really sort of romantically, whilst Shania Twain or something played in the background. Oh. So they were they they were having like a little Man, moment. So I don't feel like a baby. 
do do be do be do do. Uh, so I I feel like that they it's not going to be on before they're like officially an item, and then Chelsea will want to get a clause in, and Sam's always in the background as well. So you know it's not. Gonna, and there's not Finley, who who that we thought were Finley and yeah, Finley we're going to get together. Well. Yeah. But this love hexagon is really yeah. getting out of yeah. hand, isn't it? It's getting. I know. Nuts. Honestly, nuts. honestly, it's going to be like a parallelogram by the time it's all done. <laughs> <laughs> parallelogram? That's only four sides. Penta Sorry. Pentagon. Sorry. That's five. Octagon. Oh yeah, hexagon is six. Octagon is eight. Yeah. Decagon is seven. Decagon. Octagon is six. Decadon. 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 Yes, it must be. Onzatron. That's eleven. So I don't know. Onzatron. <laughs> Onzatron. What's that? An Australian Ons. shape. Bon no, it's not eleven. <laughs> it's French like a boomerang. French for eleven. Yeah. Anyway. Ons. Um, Onzatron. <laughs> <laughs> yes, geometry of Warford Weekly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there we are. Um, so I mean, this is basically it. Yeah, yeah. So Whitney's pregnant. That's the that's that's the big. The long short this is, is that Whitney's pregnant. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Whitney's pregnant, and Zach and, and Whitney are basically by the end of the week have have sort of gone right. Okay, let's do this. Let's do yeah. this. Everything's going to be fine. It's definitely. But they've already done it, haven't they? Anyway. To be honest, now yeah, they're, they're, it's they're definitely not facing the consequences. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sorry. it's definitely not going to be fine because no. um, because we've we've been given clues that next year is a big year for Whitney and Zach. So something is going to. Hey, these are clues I've not seen. So you've been looking dark, dark, yeah. deep. I the saw. Then. Well, I saw a I saw a Chris Clenshaw interview. And Spoiler alert! It was in Inside so Inside Soap or something. Not really. It was in Inside Soap, oh, yeah. and he just said, "Yeah, keep an eye on Whitney and Zach for the next year. Big year for them." So because mm -hmm. Billy, I mean, Whitney. <laughs> Big ears all these, everywhere. All these small cat the characters that are coming up to the forefront. I mean, I don't really know if you can count Whitney as a small character these days, can you? Like in the past three years, we've had nothing but Whitney going cra Whitney's That's life going crazy. That's true. Cray, cray, you know, so. cray, cray, wit. Maybe yeah, she should get together so, with uh, Vinny, the 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 the, dem the demoralised Vinny, <laughs> anguished and the, couple uh, in the world. And, yeah, yeah, and the, the hopeful, up to optimistic of Whitney yeah. together would be would be devastating. But yeah, so That's as fine. you say, the, the sum up the story: Whitney's pregnant. Deal with it. Mm. The end. There's a funeral to be arranged, um, and Sonia yes. is on it with a few uh, helpers. Martin's there, Sharon's there, Patrick's there, um, Jay's there. The, I there. forgot he was. Kathy was there. I forgot Jay was um, worked at the funeral. I parlor. have no idea. I thought he was Jay a bit of an odd living these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, now and again, Jay will like a funeral will happen. It's like, why are you talking to Jay about it? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I thought he'd left the funeral parlor. Because nobody works there at the minute, really, do they? Now Stuart and Rainey mm. have gone. It's like they've kind of forgotten that, oh, crap, we need characters to deal with the future. Oh, right. <laughs> Jay can just go and deal with that. Uh, there we go. And now he's got Loft. That's a Loft. Jay problem. Was, was Lanky. Lanky or someone. What, what Lanky, yeah. I I always think Lanky? of the Donkey yeah. Kong games whenever I hear yeah. Lanky. So Lanky Kong. I always yeah. just think, so I just Lanky associate Kong. the same thing. Okay. I just always think it's the same thing, but it's not. There you go. So Sonia so, is desperately... The funeral has been arranged by a large animated gorilla. Yes. <laughs> And I wouldn't want it any less. I mean, so Sonia yeah. is organising this. It's what June uh, would have wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, she's had a few highs and lows. We've already had a few cancellations. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, can I just say this, right? So Charlie's got COVID. which is Charlie's why Charlie, got COVID. Which, is why, which suggests to me straight away that Doc died from COVID. Because he was she, she was living oh, with yeah. Charlie, wasn't she? So clearly, Charlie's not turning because of guilt and just doesn't want to go because he realises that the COVID that he's got possibly might have been responsible for his grandma's death. It, no, you know, she that's died in her bed, though, didn't she? She just died. Yeah, well, but she, he was living with Charlie. Though. She was living with yeah. Charlie. Yeah, that's what Charlie, that's what Charlie says happens. <laughs> so, pillow, you know. <laughs> I want inheritance and I need it now. No, I just <laughs> mean he might have given her with COVID. You know, oh, okay, that, okay. Yes, that's what I mean, yes. Because, Still a death uh, warrant, Charlie, eh? So Charlie's not going. We've just established Charlie's that. not going. Uh, Rose isn't Charlie's going. Not going. Rose isn't going. So both of my yep. questions that I had last week was like, well, yep. like, Charlie surely should be there. And is Rose still alive? And the, and the writers were like, yep, they're not going. Yep, that, and they're not going. But nor, nor, is her, nor is her son, Rose's son, Andrew, which was... No. They, 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 they thought they'd better Andrew get Cotton. that one out of the way too. Andrew Cotton, yeah. yeah. I like so Andrew. They're on a Bless cruise. Him. They're on a cruise. They're on a cruise! Yeah, they're, they're stuck on a cruise. In the Mediterranean, so they're not going. <laughs> they, can't, yeah, fair they, can't, they can't possibly fight for us. And, I sh and, I sh and, I and we shan't be visiting afterwards either, because I've missed it now, so what's the point? You know, it's... <laughs> but we, to be fair, you know, we're not criticised. We knew this was going to happen. We knew we of were... Of course so it would happen. They've got, a real, they've got a reel off a few people. Like, they're not coming for this mm. reason. They're not, I mean, to be fair, one thing COVID has done is given the writers and producers of any soap a great excuse for characters not to be somewhere yes. that they should be. You know, <laughs> 
World Every pandemic. Cloud. There's a reason. There's a reason Every for it. Cloud. I mean, but, you know, we mustn't forget that Michelle never went to her own funeral. Uh, her own funeral. That would be mad. No. <laughs> Father's funeral. Arthur's funeral. No. So, you know, it's, it's not something that's new. It's not that there's something that's And she didn't even have COVID like as an excuse, did she? She, you know, well, she so. might have. She might have. Might have, she, might have done. Patient zero, Michelle Fowler. Um, there you go. So, yeah, so we know that they're not coming. And we actually, there's an email on I, I, I don't want to go in, uh, in a moment where uh, someone's kind of written in and said, like, their disappointment with some of the names that have popped up as well. So we'll talk about that a bit more in detail in a second. And it's not our yes. fault. Can't it's do anything about that. No, we didn't do but, it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. Blade for everything. We get blade for everything that goes wrong with this show. Right. Sonya's slow morph into becoming the new Doc Cotton is As happening. It's just. <laughs> it's like... I was so proud. Oh, you're not proud when she came up with I'm not one to gossip. I was I I, I, I loved it. I felt I loved a little bit like, oh okay. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I thought and sweet. I thought Sharon's impression was even better. <laughs> Sharon's impression was fantastic. I loved yeah. that. Really? People are bringing vegetable lasagnas to Sha- uh, to to Sonia. Um there's a lot there's a fridge full of food, which is I think is the the done thing for when people Why uh, in the family. Do have people died. make vegetable vegetable lasagnas in these scenarios though? I wouldn't want a vegetable lasagna under any circumstances. No offense to you, Alex. But I, I would prefer a normal well, I lasagna. Make one then. Fine. Good. Good. <laughs> I mean, I love lasagna. Lasagna is like my favourite meal. I love lasagna. Um, mm. And if someone came up to me while I was in grieving with a lasagna, I'd be like, oh, fabulous, what a lovely thing to do. And then I unveil the first layer of pasta as a massive aubergine slice waiting there for me. I'd be like, get out. I, that's really. Well, there might still be lasagna sheets. So you won't know until you dig into it. And then that'd be a huge like that. They've, run off yeah. down the, they've, they've run off down the road out of <laughs> You spent 30 minutes of your life cooking this vegetable lasagna, dig into it, take a first bite, and you're like that. This is vegetable lasagna. I'm like, oh, yeah, you I'd know. Be furious. <laughs> you furious. I'll bear that in mind. I'll remember that. Livid. <laughs> Livid. <laughs> the vegetable Eat lasagna will be going your way. Pulled pork lasagna, that's what you want to make. They're really tasty. That's my, Are they that's nice? My, that's, my, um, that's my dish. That I, that's There's Italians story, turning so. in their graves and right now who are hearing you say they've got pulled pork lasagna. Lovely. I think vegetables one step too far, but. Paul, Paul, I so know. do I. Paul, <laughs> anyway, carry on. Is it, is it, <laughs> we will have it, we will have this argument off air, Alex. It's fine. Don't fair worry. enough. We will is, have it, we will have it. If it's a pork lasagna, is it a different? Uh, any Italians oh, no. watching? Well, no, I'm just thinking because there's shepherd's pie and there's cottage pie, and one's beef mince and one's lamb mince. Yes. One's so lamb if a lasagna, yes. a lasagna is beef mince. Surely then pork shepherd's would be a different <laughs> shepherd's lasagna. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like just a different yeah. name. It's any just, Italians it's, listening or watching? Let's know. It's just, it's just a different yeah, there's filling, a different yeah. name for it. Shepherd's pie, cottage pie, different filling. You know, cheesecake and anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> carry on. Cheesecake and and and, and where we go with that? Cheesecake and <laughs> tiramisu. I don't know. <laughs> yes, they. I can confirm they are different. Yes, they are different. They are, different. They are completely things. different Good. desserts. Good. Yeah, there we Good. are. I'm glad so about anyway, that. so um, Dot has returned home, which is a very moving scene. I thought in, in a box where. Yeah, in a, well, in a coffin. Not a, just in a, 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 a most in a, later. In a coffin. <laughs> you know, in a very, a very tall coffin. I thought quite tall for Dot. I didn't know. I didn't. I don't mean. I'm not really sure how tall Dot was, but it looked. Oh, I see. I thought you meant like coffin. she was stood upright, like a vampire. <laughs> like they're gonna open the door and you're just gonna see. Like, <laughs> it's. The, I'm confused I by I, your terminology. I don't, uh, in a coffin she's home in a coffin like her coffee her body has returned back to the square and she's currently in she's currently in the living room effectively isn't she in a coffin she is waiting for the well it used to be her bedroom for a short period of time it did it hmm. did it did indeed um so it still is her bedroom um, i suppose in a <laughs> yes so that was nice wasn't it at the end of the week we had a lovely sort of kind of not silent credits but like a, an old no duff duff call type song no duff duff but a nice Another musical no duff duff. Mu- number playing over the credits mm-hmm. on the uh, on the uh, on the plaque for saying dot yes. cotton and uh, yeah it's lovely um, it's lovely written in, the, written in new times roman i thought uh so <laughs> uh <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what font they'd use for that for that plaque. i'd want i'd want dingbats if i was gonna I'd, have i'd want, wing, I'd want, I'd want wing dings my... i want yeah wing dings, just they're the really same nice though. see wing dings dingbats shepherd's pie cottage pie you're a dingbat. So the <laughs> this whole conversation so Dot... is about one of the same thing. Oh, I know. So Dot's home, which is lovely, uh, and yes. it's all very moving. And I'm trying to just bring us back to normality here, Alex. You know, I do apologise. Well, I can think uh, of that is so... quite I know. I can imagine. Well, that's good for a vegetarian and a vegan, isn't it? Uh, good luck. Lentils. With that, lentils. I make it with lentils. Don't that be disgusting. Be? No, it's delicious. Rob, that's what that would be. If It'd anyone be wants the recipe for my lentil cottage shepherd's vegan pie then let me know can't even call it a pie can you can't even call it a pie well, you struggled to say pie then 
it's not a pie. It's, it's, it's lasagna a pie. Because technically no. it's in a pie dish, isn't it? And you're kind of layering no. it up. You're, you put it in a, no, you put lasagna in a lasagna dish. That's what they're called, lasagna dishes. Those Are they? Glass. I just put them in a yes. dish. I, I, I don't no, carry on, carry on. Dot's home. Dot's I home. will. Dot's Good. home, yes. In, in, and she's... Dottie's very upset. Whitney came Dottie's to say hello. <laughs> yeah, she did. Jack also Whit- knocked Whit- on her. Whit- Whitney's, th- Whitney's 30th was ruined by that point because, like, Sonia came, right, you need to come <laughs> and deal with Sonia. So, so Whitney was kind of just throwing, like, do you know what? Screw it. Yeah, I'll go yeah. and deal with Greedy. I can't politics. drink. That's fine. Like, I'm I, I can't drink. I can't drink. I'm pregnant. Like, yeah, I'll just go and deal with this. That's absolutely fine. So she, she goes in. And like I say, at the end of the week, I actually felt quite a moving scene of them all sort of standing around Dot's coffin in the living room while this music hall song played. I can't remember when we meet again or something. Like that wasn't it? I can't remember the can can. You hear the roof of the coffin going, and Dot is and Dot is home again. She's back in London where she belongs, and she'll have a funeral on Monday for 45 minutes. Woo! Yeah, so there we go. Can I also very lovely round a topic about this because we are going to stay on track somehow. Um, Dotty got a bit upset this week because she felt like that her feelings weren't being validated. That like a lot of people yes. were kind of like passing them off as in, oh, you're just kind of, you don't care. Your nan's died. And I felt sorry for Dottie because I think she is genuinely upset. And she tried well, she to is. get this contact with Sonia, wants to help Sonia. Sonia's kind of also pushing her away. And I thought there was a good moment that Dottie was the first to find out, well, discover that Dot yeah. had come home. And so she rallied well, up the troops of Jack and Whitney and then they all went to visit Sonia. So I thought that was a yeah, touching well, moment it, too. It was nice. But I think the Dottie's problem is the fact that uh, she, I think Dottie believes that whatever she's done should be completely forgotten about because she's grieving for her grandma. Whilst the rest mm. of the, well, Martin kind of quite rightly turns around to her and said, yeah, if you're wanting lots of support, you're going to have to try and make a bit of effort with people. And she's like, why would I need to do that? Yeah, you know, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, uh, yeah, so I can kind of see. I I did feel sorry for her, but she's not going to kind of. She's going to get kind of like the bare minimum of support at the moment because of what she's done and how she's treated people, which I, I don't know. think really is a lesson that really settles in Dottie's head all that well. But I think it's yeah. nice that she was there. I think it was nice that she was there at the end of the week with. Um, I keep calling it Friday episode, Thursday's episode, um, with with Sonia and everybody else, kind of just holding hands and just watching the watching the watching the coffin. So Monday, watching the coffin, watching the coffin, <laughs> just standing there looking at it. <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> We're just Any watching. Now. <laughs> shh, shh. <laughs> Does anyone want to come to <laughs> watching um, <laughs> Ready for the ready for the funeral on Monday, which looks to be, let's be honest, a big old event. A big yes, old event Monday. I hope so. Um, I hope so. It's. I really. I, I'm not. You know, looking forward to it, but I'm very excited by it because it feels like it's going to be an actual occasion, and they're really going to throw all the stops at it. And to be fair, with all the care and attention they've paid to it so far, I'm. I'm very. Excited. Oh, they have. I have to. Say, I have to say they're doing. They've doing. They've done the job so far. So Monday, I'm really looking forward to. It's. It's, it's be been done thing. really well and with taste. And I think <laughs> that you know, there was an. I said, oh, I wish they'd do more for Dottie's funeral a week's worth. But actually, in a funny way, they have built up to it quite nicely with the kind of the, mm. the plot kind of going forward with it right now and seeing, you know, cast members kind of getting together. But you don't necessarily see together. Like you don't see Sonia and Sharon together very often. So that was nice. No, and you should. And you together. should. And yeah. I, you know, I like and I like Martin's involvement as well because Doc mm. basically kind of was basically quite instrumental in him being brought up. You know, when, whenever Paulie yeah. was, having, was having a moment. So it's it's it, it's nice that they've kind of got enough sort of old school characters still around. I know EastEnders isn't known necessarily for having a whole range of you know not like Corey has where people have been there for about 112 years. You know, EastEnders has kind of got a few select characters that have been there from the start. Which is why it's going to feel so weird if Ian isn't there, and I know that's not their fault, but it's going to feel weird right. if Ian's not there. I'm sorry, it really is. But that moves us well, nicely on too. It certainly does, Rob. Look at you. Look at you. So yes, this moves us very nicely to uh, an email on I ain't want to gossip. Oh, I ain't want to gossip. <laughs> we had an email this week from yeah. Bob. Hello, Bob. Thank you. Hello, Bob. Bob. And uh, Bob has written, <laughs> hi there, Alex. Oh, good. Yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 I'll, yeah. I'll just sit back and chill. You two have a conversation. <laughs> I'll sit well, I'll be fine. That's fine. Good for you. I am just yeah. emailing to express my fury at the notable absences surrounding Dot's funeral. Whilst I wholly, oh. wholly understand this, that actors and actresses must be busy, there are some which simply appear to not be doing anything right now, but still aren't coming back. The biggest shock was Charlie, actor Duncan Bennett. What the heck? 
He needs to be there. What did he do? Just send the body off and be like, that's your problem now. And Nigel, as you and Rob have mentioned occasionally, another notable absence. Oh. What are your thoughts? Do you qu uh, do the quickly made up on screen excuses work? And do you personally feel that some of these should have or could have come back? Many thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob, for your email. Uh, Thank Rob, you, Bob. Throwing it yes, to you. Who Bob. do you expect to see well, as surprises Bob. on Monday's episode? Well, Bob. I... <laughs> I'll stop now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just Blackadder. It just reminds me of Blackadder. I can't it reminds me of Blackadder as well. Uh, yeah. Um, I see. This, the problem is, we, so, you know, we've, and we've discussed this, is the fact that, and I think Chris Clencher actually released an interview, like, talking about the episode and saying, like, obviously there's loads of... He said there's, there's people we wanted to come back that the actors weren't available or whatever. And that's the problem you have, you know. Sometimes actors just aren't available or, frankly, it's a sod off. I ain't doing that. Screw off. Uh, so they just don't, they just don't want to <laughs> come back. Not paid enough. You know? Get off. Not paid enough. You know, some people, you know, so they will have asked a lot more people than we probably get. I do think there's going to be some surprises, some nice so surprises. Do I. I do believe. I do believe that to the point where I'm expecting surprises. So if we don't get any, we're going to hate it. <laughs> yes, it's going to be even worse. <laughs> Which doesn't seem fair, really, does it? Not really I'd very fair. Take, I'd even take Skype calls, to be honest with you. Yeah, like, I they've know. done a Someone's couple of times in the living room. You know, yeah, with, I, I, with you Sean. Never know. You never know. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, the likes of Nigel would, would have been lovely. Um, I think I do. I, I do think it's kind of a, a bit weird for Charlie not to go to the funeral, considering he's been living with Dot for the past like two, three years or something. But, you know, what can you do? Well, you can't really do a lot about it, can you? Um, you know, if the actor doesn't want to get on to or what available, what are you supposed to do? You can't just recast somebody for the, for, for the sake of that, would you? I mean, no. is that, is that I mean, for one no. episode, you can't really do it, can you? Not no. for one episode, unless you were going to bring them back as a permanent character. Full then time. Yeah. Fine, but no. And, and if you no, 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 <laughs> no. I think that's discussed discussed from that. And what I am looking forward to, I have to say, is uh, the arrival of Reese, the, yeah. the new character that we discussed in, we discussed in last week, because he sounds exciting. I, he does sound interesting, doesn't he? You know when Intriguing. you look at a pro, yeah, you know when you look at a character's pro mark, pro pro mark, pro mark. Pro mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a character's local pro mark and think, oh, you're going to be good. Um, but, you know, you look at them and you just think, oh, you look interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing you and seeing what you're about. You know, so I, I'm excited. I am excited mm -hmm. to meet Reese. I think it's going to be good. I think, And I just love that Sonya's getting so much to do at the moment because we've been moaning yeah, about, Nat, about Nat Cass not having enough to do for ages now. Mm. And now she's, she's finally busy on Instagram, almost busy, doing all kinds of stuff busy. on Instagram, but on screen, kicking, on this actual show, off about, she's been paid to do. about the Argos catalogue and quite right too, <laughs> bless her. Um, um, so I'm, I'm still, I'm still delighted. holding out hope. I must say, I'm still mm -hmm. holding out hope, and and uh, if, if done tastefully, if that makes any sense. You want something Nick with Nick, don't you? Mm, yeah, I want a I Nick Cotton. I don't know why. I don't know how that would work because Nick spent most of his life trying to kill Dot, so I don't know why they would have any sort of association. Yeah, I with him know, at the but I just think that he would come back if that makes I don't sense. Think he I would. just, I don't think he would. With I think, Ashley I in tow. <laughs> yeah, right. I, Fair enough. I just, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. If they somehow managed to shoehorn a Nick, a Nick thing in there in somehow, then I'll, hmm. I'll like it. You know, I'll be like, all right, yeah, fair play, and I'm sure they'd they'd make it work. But I just don't, I don't say logically. You know, bearing in mind that Nick spent half of his, most of his life trying to kill Dot, and the only reason he died was because Dot effectively killed him. Well, she didn't really save think... his life. She gave him yeah, an overdose. So and he died, eh? left it in God's hands because that's how helpful Dot was in those respects. You know, I just <laughs> don't, I don't think that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, let us know in the comment section below, no. uh, you know, what you would think of some sort of dot thing. Final final call of who you want to turn up and who yeah. you think will turn up and what surprises you think are coming. Stick them in the comment section below. Yes, Alex. Well, no, I, 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 I'm going to concur <laughs> what you were saying. <laughs> um, and, and... <laughs> here, here, here. House of Lords. Um, but, but Apologies. I also... Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> oh! But, um, oh! but before Rob gives you the details, of, and mm. we stop making just random noises, before Rob gives you the details of how you can get in touch Lost with us, I just mind. want to uh, update uh, the listeners yes. and the viewers of the it's podcast awesome. with some yeah. information. So, right, Christmas is coming. I don't know if you've noticed. Really? Um, and Stop. so, yes. So um, <laughs> there's a few <laughs> shuff rounds for when our episodes are going to now come out. So... Uh, because of a few bits and pieces behind the scenes, our next episode of the podcast is actually coming out on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, Tuesday the 13th mm -hmm. of December, where we will be just reviewing Dot's funeral episode, the 45-minute episode on Monday. So we're doing a special episode. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, going to be a Dot's funeral episode. So send us your emails, your comments with uh, how what you thought about the uh, the funeral 
and also what you expect to see from the funeral, what you're excited to see, what you're not so excited to see, and also any kind of well wishes toward um, the cast and anyone else and mm. whatever. Just send us whatever you like. Just send it to us. Um, uh, and that's on Tuesday the 13th of December. Then, then you've got a little while to wait until our next episode. And we're going to sum up everything between Tuesday to Thursday uh wednesday the 21st of december and then the next episode will be thursday the 22nd of december so our next podcast episode before christmas is thursday the 22nd of december and then we're doing the big one the big christmas episode which will be coming out on saturday the 31st of december so you can listen to that while you're getting yourself ready for your new year's eve hogmanay parties um and that'll be our big christmas episode so dates to remember to pop in your diary is tuesday the 13th Thursday the 22nd and Saturday the 31st of December. Right, that's yes. enough rambling from me. Rob, you take it away. And the Christmas schedules for EastEnders itself has been released. And this year, we well, not this year, but next year, effectively, we do have our New Year's Day episode back uh, this, this time around. I haven't got one New Year's Eve. And we haven't got an episode on Christmas Eve either. So we've got a Christmas yeah. Day and a Boxing Day episode. None of the soaps are on Christmas Eve, you know. They've all said they've all stepped back. So that's going to be weird for no soap whatsoever to be on Christmas Eve. I can't. I don't. Think I don't hate it. Before. I'll be honest. I don't yeah, hate it's, it. It's on a Saturday anyway, so it wouldn't. It's not like EastEnders would be on, but it just feels weird mm -hmm. for them not to. It just for none of the soaps to have done it. You know. It, well, there you go. Uh, I'm, I'm got, always got... prepping my sprouts on a, on New Year's Eve. So. Yes, yes, and stuffing your <laughs> tofu turkey uh, oh, full yeah. of vegan stuffing. Lovely. Peening my parsnips. Uh, so, yes. Uh, buttering, oh, no, not butter. no, buttering. I won't be buttering, buttering them or honeying them either. No, I'll be no. thinking, oh, algarve, whatever they call it. The syrup. I mean, it's very nice. I mean, with a I'm bit sure. of salt and pepper. I mean, I'm not despondent towards veganism. I hope that comes across. Oh, clearly. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. No vegetable lasagna in me for me. <laughs> Too right. Too right. You can get in touch with us by doing the following. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wolford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Wolford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos. And you can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify, or any of your favourite podcast sites. Email us at robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. Uh, so until until then, next week, make sure that I mean I don't know if we're going to wear some sort of funeral regalia. I get my fascinator out. Dress, you know, I always used to I used to love the cast when they when they're dressing for funerals. I have to say because some of them are just spectacular. <laughs> Pat and Peggy's outfits for funerals used to be great, didn't they? Massive hats, bigger than them. The well, Pat, what Pat, we were just saying before Bale. we started recording, what Pat wore for Frank's funeral mm. that big that red dress. Spectacular. Oh yeah, when she took off the black coat and she just revealed herself yeah, in that red dress. It, it was oh, it was a fabulous. stunning moment. Stunning. Fabulous. Fabulous. Bye. Uh there we are then. So until next week, lovely viewers and listeners. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye for myself. Have a lovely weekend. See you next week. Bye. Bye.